today, I'm going to tell you why it's important that you pick a system for your team. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey guys, today I want to talk about why it's really important to have a system as part of your strategy to win a championship or avoid relegation. Systems are really, really important. And the core reason really is it gives you an opportunity to firstly train your players to play with a very specific style and understand specifically how to play with each other. The second component of it is really that it allows you to select specific players that fit into your system style of play. Now, all of us as managers, are gonna have a specific formation that we gravitate towards. So some people are gonna like 442, a very classic formation, very well balanced, giving you the ability to use crossing specialists or fast players that can cut in, and really just giving you a lot of different options, but allowing you to build from either the middle or the wing. Now some of you are gonna have a preference for more defensive style formations, like a 5-3-2 that gives you really good foundation at the back and where you're going to use your wing backs to start the attack, to push forward and get into some really dangerous situations, potentially providing things like crosses or even cutting in and taking long shots. And then others might want to play more of a Klopp style of play, taking a page out of Liverpool's book, having two really good attacking wingers with a dummy runner in the middle or a poacher or a post-up player, allowing you to rotate around that player, lay off through balls, put over the top balls in and have a really, really aggressive style of play. Now, for the most part, when you come into a Master League season, you have a general idea of what you're gonna play, what formation you're gonna play, who the players you really like are, maybe they're players that you've played with before that you just really enjoy using. But each formation and player style is going to have a different reaction once you get on the field. And what a system allows you to do is really build around their strengths, build around the strengths of the formation that you're using, build around the strengths of the players that you're using, their specific playing styles, and really how they're playing off each other, how one player plays off another player and builds that chemistry and really allows you to replicate success. You can replicate success in defense where you have players that really understand each other, that have very good chemistry as far as being able to cover through balls or over the top balls, having some consistency in being able to control the defensive area of the pitch, or it can be in midfield or attack where you have the ability to consistently build up in a way that suits your style of play, the way that you play the game and the players that you have. This is really what a system is. Now the beauty is that once you have a system, you can consistently bring players in that complement your system and complement the other players that you have in your team. And this could be players that are better players than you have today, where you're going from a striker, where you rely on speed and you bring in a player that's faster and has better stamina, but still has the same play style as the striker that you're replacing. Or it could be that you're bringing in a youth player. You've got a player like Messi or Ronaldo who are at the end of their career. They still have two years, three years left. And you want to bring in someone at this stage who has the same play style that can be as good as them by the time you have to retire them. So there's many reasons why you can benefit from a system, but each one of those reasons is extremely valid in Master League. Now your system's going to consist in Master League game plan as your attacking instructions and your defensive instructions along with your your formation and your advanced instructions. Each of these settings can be found under the preset tactics icon, which is the first icon to the left in the game plan tab. Once you've selected your base tactics, you're then gonna wanna go to the team sheet slash edit position tab and make small adjustments to your players. And these adjustments could be adjustments to whether a player is a defensive midfielder or a central midfielder, or they could be adjustments as far as you move the player around specifically on the pitch. So where they're supposed to be within your base formation. Now this bit's actually really important because this allows you to pre-position your players in the places where you want them to consistently be, allowing you during build-up or defensive play to guarantee that you have a player in the right place. You're probably gonna feel this a lot more on attack because as you build up, you're naturally gonna look to specific outlets. You're gonna develop playing habits where you're gonna be passing to the wing or passing through the middle. You're going to have specific pivot players that are gonna take you from defense to attack 
very quickly or give you some consistency in the way that you're building up if you're doing it in a slow manner. This could also be one twos, positioning players so that they can receive a ball, pass a ball back very quickly, and then run onto a through ball. You can pre-engineer this in your team sheet through the positions and the specific nuances of where you're positioning your player. The other thing that's really important to note here is that your player is gonna have a playing style. This playing style will alter the way that they play a very specific position. So if you've seen some of my other videos, if you're using an advanced striker at center forward versus a dummy striker at center forward, they're gonna play very differently, even though they're both playing the center forward position. There's an additional factor here that you have to think about, as if you're gonna use, for example, a right winger to play the center forward position. If they have prolific winger as their play style, that play style is going to be removed. So they will not get the benefit of that play style's behavior. And as you change players' positions, the play styles only apply to very specific positions. So you have to really pay attention as you edit the positions of players to make sure that you're not changing a player's position to something that they can't naturally play as part of their playing style. So even if they can physically play the position, for example, a right winger can play center forward, it doesn't mean that their play style will also translate. So that's really important to understand as you're building your system. You want players where you can predict their behavior and the best way to do that is to understand their play style and their proficiency in the position that you've placed them. Once you've selected your preset tactics and your player positions within your formation, then you can move on to edit your player settings and this will allow you to change who your captain is and who your free kick takers are and who your penalty takers are. The captain is actually really significant because certain players will give you a boost to team chemistry and team chemistry is in the top right corner. It's that blue shield and what that shows you is how well your players are used to playing your system and how well your players are used to playing together. And this is another huge factor of why you should be investing in a system for your team and system players that allow you to produce consistent results on the field. And this is a great indicator of when you're gonna get those consistent results. Personally, I also like to change my support settings because that gives me some additional support from the computer to change attacking or defense levels, to sub on players, and to manage some of the offside mechanics. If you're into managing all of this manually, then you don't need to do any of this. By default, it's off. For me, sometimes being caught up in the moment, I might forget to actually make a sub and I might want the computer to change my attacking or defense level or my offside setting. But that's totally up to you personally. And that doesn't affect your system necessarily. So as I've been talking, you've seen that I've been setting up my system. I selected a 5-2-1-2. And this really is mostly because Newcastle aren't a great team. They're the team I support, but they leak goals like crazy. So I need a little more defensive support. So I've got three at the back. They've got decent wingers, so I'm gonna use those. I've got two defensive midfielders, one attacking midfielder, and two center forwards. Now I play more possession football, so for me I've gone for short passes, a possession game. I'm gonna play through the center, and I'm gonna keep the distance between players pretty average, so right in the middle. On the defensive side, I'm really looking for a contain, so I'm gonna play all out defense. My containment area is going to be central. I'm gonna do conservative pressure, and I'm gonna have a pretty deep defensive line. I've also turned my compactness way up so I have the highest level of compactness. I don't want anyone able to break through down the middle. And then lastly, on my advanced instructions, I'm using attacking fullbacks because I don't have wingers. I've instructed them to hug the sideline. So I want them to run up from the back, but I really want them to stay on that sideline. And that's really to pull defenders away. So I want to pull the left and the right back of the opposing team away from the center because I've also put an attacking midfielder in the center. And the role of that attacking midfielder is going to be to run forward and cause mismatches and really just cause chaos on the defensive line and this should give me the ability to play some good three balls maybe some one twos and build some consistent attacking threat in a way that I can predict so I can keep reusing it approach it from different angles learn from each attack and eventually break through and score a goal as far as defensive instructions I'm using deep defensive line and swarm the box and that's really just giving me some consistent pressure and goes along with the conservative play style that I want for my back line so to illustrate the importance of a system what I've done is I've saved my master league at the same point and I basically started two teams. The teams are almost exactly the same. The only differences between the two teams I'm starting are the attacking midfielder and the two center forwards. In the first game what you're going to see is a scenario where I'm not using system players. I build a system but I'm using the players that Newcastle already has and I'm really picking the best players they have regardless of whether they work for my system or not. So in this case I've got Wilson, Joe Ellington, and Fraser as my main offensive threat up front and everyone else will be consistent along 
along with the formation in both scenarios. So I'll walk you through the first game. Both games are going to be against Manchester United, and I believe Manchester United starts a very similar team, if not the same team, in both games. But really what I want you to see is they have a much better team than I do, and their players are probably better versed in the Man U system. And so I'm at a huge disadvantage already, and you'll see by not using system players how much additional disadvantage or lack of advantage I have. And hopefully that shows well in both games. I think based on the results you'll see that it does. And really for me, the biggest impact was actually to the defense, not necessarily the offense. And it's really my ability to leverage the system to generate attacks consistently and just be more dangerous, which stops Man U from throwing everyone up front and scoring a bunch of goals. So I'll let you guys watch the highlights from both games. This is game one. I'm using the default Newcastle players. I haven't brought in any new players that fit my system. So I'm just picking the best players that they have available in those positions. All the forms should be the same across both games and pay close attention to Man U's ability to consistently get into aggressive positions and how much of a back and forth game it is versus a controlled game. Now officially the largest club football ground in England. Yeah, he's pulled him up for that challenge. Manchester United have an early lead. Good start. John Joe Shelby plays a clever pass. Chance to squeeze it through. And that. Wilson. Oh, that's a foul in a dangerous area. Fraser. Hayden. And it's Yedlin. Oh, good take in a good area. Bailly with a foul and a free kick in a very dangerous area. Well, it was deliberate, it was cynical, and you have to understand the frustration of, of being denied a clear opportunity, but it had to be done. Chance here to level it up. He certainly looks appetizing. Well within shooting range. Shelby! And that is quite wonderful. Sumptuous finish. An absolute joy. And he's produced a beauty. Alex Tellez goes for goal. Goal! Manchester United! And they get themselves in front! The keeper deserves some sympathy there. He may not have seen that until too late. Is not one readily to admit defeat. Don't be surprised if he tries that again. Fraser. Wilson. Wilson! Oh, real danger here. That's not going far. Another chance! They've scored! Wilson at his razor-sharp best there. Well, as they say, Peter, if you don't speculate, you won't accumulate. And we've just witnessed a player who was rewarded for his willingness to take a risk, as cunning as it comes. And 
Here's Wilson. Gets the better of his man. Cleared away. But gets it back. Wilson. Bailly gets it away. And it's Fraser. It has gone. It's Wilson! Another big chance. John Joe Sh Shelby! And in it goes! And the comeback is complete! Perfect placement. The one place the keeper couldn't reach. Now that's what I call finishing. Right in the corner. He knew instinctively who was where and didn't need to waste any time weighing things up. That's a cracking goal. who's clearly miffed at not being picked out despite making what looked like time. And here's Wilson. Fraser. Good running with the ball. Can they build on it? And it's Wilson. That. Shad plays it forward. Newcastle get it back again. Oh, but it's the guilty party there. And the referee has shown him a yellow card. Manchester United showing a little more urgency now, and to be honest, Peter, this is what's required. Yeah. Hit and hope is just about the side. Should have got his team back in the game. Van oh, shooting chance! No mistake! Well, this is just incredible. I mean, who would have seen this? Neither manager, I think. It's all happening. as soon as they made that error in midfield they didn't have time to react before the ball hit the net very much a lesson learned Brushed off the ball there. Wilson. Is there any support? He might not need it. Alright, so now you've seen game one, you have a really good understanding for how well Man U was able to break me down. I thought I actually played really well, but it was just really difficult to get consistent attacks. I scored in a couple different ways, I got a little lucky, but for the most part I got really bullied throughout the whole game. I really could not stop Man U. Now as we go into game two, you'll see I've made three changes. I brought in Jovic, Olsen, and Mina. Jovic is a poacher, fits really well into the style that I'm looking for and the system. Olsen is a dummy runner, so the goal for 
Propulsion will essentially be to get the ball to Jovic in space. And Mina is a whole player, so he'll be looking to burst through and just create a lot of problems. In the first game, Frazier did a good job, but there was no consistency to how he performed. Mina will be a lot more consistent in where he is on the field and how he's attacking the defense. Jovic, as a poacher, will also be more consistent in where he is and the type of chances he'll get. And Paulson should constantly be creating opportunities for Jovic along with space. So let's see what happens. Right, of course, the preeminent colors at Old Trafford, which is now officially the largest club football ground in England. In hesitant spell, he's grown into a supremely confident and assured character. Yeah, I'd have picked him too, no doubt. Just brushed off the ball there. Good defending, albeit from an unexpected source. More than happy to take the muck. Manchester United have pushed both fullbacks into quite advanced positions here. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So what are they attempting to do? Well, if... And here's Rashford. Gets wrestled off the ball. Could move up a gear here. Hayden. Richie. Oh, good. Has a hit! Fence has got rid of that. Approaching the half hour mark. Neither side yet able to find the net. Wilson. Chance to break. He's off on a marauding run. As Oh, real danger here. Yeah, that does look a foul. Referee's given a free kick. Cavani brilliantly took control of that, which was exactly what the situation required. Well positioned to make that interception. Rashford. Wilson. Nicely measured pass. A reprieve, albeit perhaps momentary. Shelby He's in and that has been Here we go again then No score in the first half who's ready to go for it now Hayden gets it back. And that has been clubbed away. And it's Shelby. Bruno Fettler's wage. Wilson. Still absolutely nothing to report here, goals wise. So we've reached the hour mark. That out. John Joe Shelby. John Joe Shelby. How many interceptions have we seen now? Someone's got you up the quality and... 
concentration levels are very good and so is the commitment this game could yet yield a winner Manchester United showing a good level of intensity at this stage they're calling on all their resources now finds himself eased off the ball yeah, he's pulled him up for that challenge the referee has resisted the temptation to go to his pocket it's just a stern lecture He's on his way. Danger averted for now. And he's looking at the referee. But Dubravka deals with it effortlessly. Now a chance to break. John Joe Shelby. You won. Well, both sides might have to settle for a draw here although there's still a chance for one last fling Poulsen. it's one in for the pieces oh it's in finally 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 De Gea did well the first time, nothing he could do about the follow-up. Well, look, regardless of whether the keeper could have done better or not, Peter, that was all down to the excellent movement in getting into the right position to apply the final touch. So as you can see, in game two, I was able to generate attacks in a much more consistent manner. Constantly played through the middle, constantly getting up to my front two. And really I felt that I didn't play as well in game two as I did in game one, but I had so many more opportunities. And I felt like the Man U defense played a lot better in game two and just kept stealing the opportunities from me at the last second. If you look back, there were so many chances that I had where at the last second, a pass or a shot or a defender came in and changed what should have really been a goal. So hopefully this illustrates why a system is so important and why players that fit that system are so important because I didn't go and bring in any big blockbuster players. I brought in fairly reasonable players that are around the same skill level as the players that I played with in game one. But you can see the results are very different because I was able to control the game, stop Manchester United from pressuring me and structure the way that I attacked them, which eventually led to me winning the game. Now this won't work with every single game. You're still going to lose sometimes, but this gives you a much greater chance chance of being in the game, winning the game, and over time getting promoted or winning the league. I'll do some follow-on videos on the different type of systems and players so that you can understand the best system for you, but I hope this is a good introduction to how systems work and why they're so important. All right guys, thanks for watching. Hey guys, I'm new to YouTube, so if you like the content, please give me a like. If you like the topics, please subscribe and always leave a comment if you can. Thanks guys.